I now present to you the reality creation process, which is intended to be the most clear and precise description of how reality is created available on the planet. The reality creation process will help you create the life of your dreams. So pay attention and take what you learn here for checking, for playing, for experimenting. Don't just believe what I say. Don't just agree with me or disagree. Take the ideas here and play with them yourself. Bring them to life yourself. Because this is only information and mere information is surface level will not make no difference in your life. So it is up to you to bring these ideas to life. Please, for a moment, look at your life and notice that you've created many realities, consciously or subconsciously. Everything you have in your life is a result. Whether you own a car or a house, whether you're married or not, whether you have money or not, your state, the way you communicate with people, the state of your body and your health, those are all results. Those are realities that came to be, that are the consequence of something. What are they the consequence of? I'm asking you this question so that you discover the reality creation process for yourself. Because if you can see this for yourself, you're no longer dependent on my description. How did those realities come to be? And more specifically, what happened right before you had a result. So if you have a glass of water on the table, what happened right before that glass of water was there? If there's a car parked outside, what happened right before you had that car? If you're in a relationship, what happened right before that? Well, what happened before that was an action. You took action and then you had a result. This is incredibly straightforward and simple. You took action and then there was a consequence. Of course, if this were all that there's to it, I wouldn't have to teach what I'm teaching. It's not all that there's to it, but bear with me for a moment. So any result is a success because the result is the successor of action. In my paradigm, even negative results and negative experiences are called success, are taken responsibility for because it is seen that they are the consequences of various actions. So if you happen to be overweight, then that is a success because you did many things to achieve that success. So you may have overeaten for a long time or lacked physical exercise for a long time or held emotional, um, heavy emotions for a long time. And so you succeed with the result of overweight. Likewise, if you have a healthy and athletic body, that is also a success a consequence of various actions, behaviors, and emotions. So at the most fundamental and easy level, at the level that is obvious to most people, actions lead to results. 99% of the population are aware of this. Not all people use this, but everybody pretty much sees the correlation sees that there's an action and then something happens. So creating reality could be as simple as 
writing down actions that are aligned with your goal, and then executing them. Or writing down the actions that are not aligned with your goal and stopping to do them. Now, as simple as this is, many people still don't do that. They think they can keep taking the same actions and get different results. What happened right before action was taken? What is action the successor of? I'm asking you this so that you participate in this presentation and look for yourself, discover for yourself. Most of you will have answered, well, before there was an action, there was a thought, and that answer would be correct. But right here, I'm looking for a specific thought, which is the decision, a chosen thought, a decision. So you made a decision, then you took action, then there was a result. So a more fundamental level of creation is decision. Of course, if your consciousness and life are chaotic, then not every decision will lead to an action. You'll decide one thing, you'll change your decision the next day, day after that you'll have yet another decision and not act on any of them. But if the two are aligned, then your decision will create an action, will create a result. And decisions succeed thoughts and, at one deeper level, feelings. So it's basically thought, action, result. Or thought, chosen thought, which is the decision, action, result. Or thought, word, deed. Thought, word, deed. So you have thousands of thoughts a day, and from these thousands of thoughts you choose one, you make a decision, then you act upon the decision, then you have a result. So if your thoughts and feelings are fearful, then you will make fearful decisions, which lead to inappropriate actions and negative results. Say you're afraid of your boss, so you make the decision to avoid your boss, and then you take actions of going away every time he enters the room, and the result is a very contracted and constricted reality, and perhaps getting fired sooner or later because there's no um, rapport between you and your boss. But if you have enthusiastic thoughts, such as uh, being a, in love with somebody, and then you make the decision to spend a lot of time with them, to be intimate with them, with the according actions, and the result of intimacy. So, rather than only operating at the surface level of your actions, it can be wiser and more effective to operate at the level of thought, to change first your thoughts and feelings, before you try to change your actions. Because if the fundamental template is not changed, the actions and external results and realities will eventually resort back to the default that is based on the template of thought. So again, using the example of overweight, if you exercise like crazy, do sports like crazy, diet, and so forth and so on, but have not changed your underlying thoughts and feelings, you will need much more effort, much more action to gain results, and these results will only be temporary because sooner or later your thoughts and feelings will compel you to resort to the old behavior. Now, most people are aware of this progression. Scientists, brain researchers, psychologists, motivational teachers, success coaches, most of them are aware of this progression. Even New Agers are aware of it, but they overemphasize the thought part, 
saying thoughts create reality. However, feelings are one level deeper than thought, so if anything, feelings create reality, emotions. And there's also decisions and actions involved, not only thoughts. Thoughts only have a direct influence on reality without taking action if they are strong enough, powered enough. But this is still not all there is to it. What are thoughts and feelings the successor of? Out of what do thoughts and feelings arise? And this is where my teaching comes in. They arise out of consciousness, out of a vast field of awareness that both originates thought and feeling and permeates thought, feeling, action and realities. This is where I and science differ. Contemporary science says that consciousness is a byproduct of thought, a byproduct of the brain, but this cannot be so, as any long-time meditator can tell you. This is something usually only long-time meditators can see and experience for themselves, namely that thought arises out of consciousness. Consciousness has the ability to originate thought, release thought, permeate thought, let go of thought and feeling. So it cannot be a byproduct of thought. Consciousness can observe thought. There is something, an awareness or an observer, that is aware of thought, but not thought. That is also to say that if you change your consciousness, you change external reality quite radically, because a shift in your own consciousness changes many feelings. One shift in consciousness can change a thousand feelings. Changing a thousand feelings can change one hundred thousand thoughts. Changing one hundred thousand thoughts will shift a million decisions and actions and ultimately change your reality, even if there's a time buffer between changing your consciousness and the result. If you're not quite sure how to change your consciousness, you might at least operate at changing your emotional state, your emotional feelings, because one emotion is followed by hundreds of thoughts. All those many thoughts going around in your mind change simply one emotion, and you have a completely different set of thoughts. Now, in what I teach, there, is, there are a few more items between consciousness and thought or feeling, and I'll call that identity here. This realm between consciousness and thought or feeling could also be called core beliefs, and it could also be called the subconscious. Identities or core beliefs or the subconscious are the fundamental programs you are not aware of, you are not conscious of, through which you see the world. So you see reality not as it is, but filtered through certain identity glasses. Subconscious, because you are looking through the glasses instead of at the glasses. Looking through the identity instead of at the identity. This is addressed in the Enlightenment Technique, which is available on my website. That's where you learn how to handle and release and shift certain identities. So if, for example, you are a doctor, you have the identity, I am a doctor, then you will have certain thoughts and feelings as a consequence of that, make certain doctor decisions, take doctor actions, and experience a doctor reality. And one of those realities will be that you rarely get sick or ill. It is statistically proven that doctors rarely get sick or ill. The reason is that their identity does not allow them to. They are responsible for giving health, and in giving health all day, it is in fact difficult to get sick, 
even though they are constantly exposed to sick people. So it is not necessarily true that contagious things are contagious, they're only contagious from a certain identity, a non-doctor identity. So it is rather rare that doctors get sick. That is how powerful an identity affects reality. So you will make the most fundamental changes at the levels of consciousness, identity, deep-seated emotions, and core beliefs. It is highly recommended that you first change these aspects before trying to change your external reality, which, as you can see here, is futile, trying to change your life by changing only externals, like getting a new job or moving to another location or changing your partner, but that does not change your fundamental consciousness, who you are. You take who you are with you wherever you go. So if you change your location or change the curtains in your room or change your partner, your identity and the way you experience and perceive the world still stay the same. And no matter how many partners you have, you'll be experiencing similar problems, similar energies, no matter where you go. Or if you take action and try to work like crazy in order to uh, create more prosperity in your life, that's not really going to work if you don't change your identity to that of a rich and abundant person. You can take as much action you wa you want. It's not going to make any difference in your life. And after working 40 years, chances are you'll just get fired instead of promoted. So trying to create change at the wrong level is, is one of the common mistakes. Another common mistake is having too many different contradictory identities, contradictory thoughts and feelings, thousands of thoughts and feelings that don't match, and with that, contradictory decisions and contradictory actions. So if you have too many different things going on, you can't laser focus your attention so that it's one clear and clean line of identity, feeling, thought, decision, action, result. And the way to solve that really is by releasing um, almost everything, releasing all of your thoughts and feelings, and then looking at what's left, which will be certain identities, then releasing those identities, and finally choosing one at a time, so that you can rapidly and clearly create whatever reality you focus your attention on. So, consciousness, as I've said elsewhere, is um, like the seed of the ocean, the floor of the ocean. Identity, subconscious, and core beliefs are like the ocean itself. And your thoughts, your conscious mind, is like the surface of the ocean. And your decisions, actions, and external realities are even more surface. So, in operating at all these surface levels, not much really changes, but a slight shift at a deeper level changes everything. That's why many people are reluctant to change things at this level, because they know that a change in consciousness will create a tsunami at the surface of the ocean. So, in my work with people, I mostly operate at changing emotions, which are one level deeper than thought, and changing core beliefs, which is another half level deeper, and in some cases, identities. A shift and change in consciousness is only recommended to expert and advanced reality creators or under coaching guidance. If this presentation made things clear to you and inspired you to experiment and play with it, please recommend it far and wide. My name is Frederick Dotson. Thank you very much for viewing.